go, chat. Hello, YouTube. Hello, people. I'm going to be reacting to um, skill up review of the first a descendant um please forgive my ignorance i really don't know what a skill up is but my chat has been telling me since i started my stream this morning if i have seen this i don't know what this is about austin does not recommend the first descendant review let's take a look Video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Stick around to learn more about how Surfshark lets you browse the web freely and securely. Plus, get four additional months for free at a special price. Oh my God, Chad, that's not my sponsorship. That's this person's sponsorship. Also, just for the record, like we do all of our um, reactions, if you guys do not want um, a white-haired, blue-eyed VTuber reacting, stopping, pausing, flipping, and reversing it, you can click in the description down below if you guys want to see the uninterrupted version of this. But in the meantime, I am definitely going to be reacting to this and giving my opinion of the reaction, of the review. Um, already, I have one thing to say. Austin does not recommend. Okay, so already... I think we're starting off wrong and something I disagree. When something is given to you for free, there is no better judge out there than yourself. I would say, I would agree 100%. Maybe with this take of does not recommend if it had a price tag attached to it, but this has no price tag. This is a free to download experience. With that being said, the only true crit a critic for anything that you might like or might dislike is yourself. Nobody else can make this opinion. Everybody comes into everything biased, just like I am going to be extremely biased of this review. Maybe not extremely. I'm going to try to be as fair as possible with the review, but just saying anything that is free and you have a couple of hours of your day, week, Try it out for yourself. If you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. There is stick around to the no uh, price attached to this. The video to learn more. November has been a bit of a dry month for video games. And I, I know before uh, some of you guys are saying, there's time in best There's time. You're a, you're a gamer, bitch. You're online. You're already wasting time. What the hell do you mean by time investment? Do you do need, need to do five more hours of the same lap that you do in your tired, played out MMO? You have time. If you're watching this review, you have time. So we thought we'd rummage through the backlog. Uh, one that I was keen to loop back to is the first Descendant, the Warframe inspired looter shooter MMO Lite from Nexon. This launched about four months ago now, so I'm a little late to the party, but I was quite interested to finally jump in given the cool trailers, uh, the buzz I was hearing at launch, and uh -huh, its impressive uh -huh. peak player count of over 250,000 players. 264,000! So I thought to myself, there must be something here, right? Uh, let's see what I'm missing out on. Having now spent some time with the first Ascendant, uh -huh. I am genuinely surprised that it ever managed to reach that level of popularity. Now look, I have been around for the launch of many uh -huh, shaky uh -huh. live service games. Uh, between Anthem, Avengers, the original Destiny, the early access launch of Wayfinder, and most recently Avengers. with Throne in Liberty. All of these games had significant problems, but as someone who's into these kinds of games, I can put up with a lot of bullshit. I've always been uh -huh, overall okay. optimistic. Always let him able cook, to find let him cook. Something to latch on to, whether it's a novel new mechanic, a tight core gameplay, or even just the presentation. And it's often enough that I'd at least have a decent time up until hitting the end game. But this game, man, uh, this game broke okay. me. Let's Never take a have look, I played chat. a game with such a monotonous gameplay structure, so unpleasant to look at and engage with, so disrespectful. Unpleasant to look at? Okay. <laughs> you can say what you want to say about the, the core mechanics, content, and everything. Saying it's unpleasant to look at is... Um, but Ooh, let, let, let's continue to, to so watch him. absent of any new concepts that might set it apart from other games like it. Playing through the first Ascendant was frankly excruciating. Just tens of hours of mindless grind. Yeah. I wanted to throw in the towel just a few hours in, but I pushed myself through just in case there was some redeeming quality. It all, I... uh, look, it already sounds like uh, he came into this with, a, with, a, with an agenda, you know? 
he's saying, oh my God, I really tried to push myself through this. So he's like not really enjoying the game from the beginning and that's totally fine, you know? Um, I guess just for like, I guess for his work, he, he tried to push on to give like a longer review, but sometimes it just isn't for you. And that is totally fine. There doesn't mean that there's something inherently wrong with the game. It's just not for you. Let's see if his criticisms are actually valid though. Like he can point out, oh my God, I tried to open this door and I got bugged out for 20 minutes trying to cross this. These are valid criticisms because if your game is releasing buggy, that's that's horrible and a horrible experience to get through. Um, but I don't, I don't know yet. Let's, let's continue watching. So far, it seems like he just didn't want to play the game eventually surface itself in the campaign or the end game. Spoiler, there isn't. I struggle to see any latent potential here, no reasons to get excited for it in the future, no reason I would play this over uh -huh. any other live service or looter title. And no, adding more jiggle physics to the game will not change that, Nixon. But it doesn't hurt. Um. Uh, for that take, um, it's not really something Nexon is suggesting. It is the community feedback that they've gotten, and they've gotten feedback from us, the gamers, that they should incorporate jiggle physics, etc. So, like a good company does, you often take some of the feedback and you try to enhance it, better it, to meet the demand of people. People want that. So, it's kind of commendable for the developer to say, you know what, if there's strong enough support for this, yeah, we'll do it. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Of course, if it doesn't hinder other development time, which in this case, I don't think so. Um, probably he doesn't know and doesn't follow well with the, the development of the game, but so far the developers have promised and have talked about incorporating different mechanics where it just incorporating extra jiggle physics, I don't think will hinder their progress. You know, it's just like my model right now, my V2A model. If I go to my artist and say, hey, can we add um, more um, physics to my hair? This will take five minutes tops to incorporate more physics to my hair. It's just about turning up a little slider. Before we dive into the critique, uh, let's talk about yeah. the stuff that I liked about the first Descendant. Okay. The visuals can look great at times, uh, boasting an impressive sense of scale and detail. The gunplay and character kits uh -huh, are uh -huh. decent. This grapple hook thing is fun to use. Oh, and these grappling. spectacle boss great. fights can be quite an engaging mechanical <laughs> challenge. That's it. That's, that's all I got. Uh, the rest of this is going to be pretty scathing, so buckle up. Now, the first thing that jumped out at me in some of the trailers and promo videos uh -huh. was the presentation. And as I said, sometimes the game does look quite nice, uh, particularly when it comes to those more natural environments. But most of the time, man, I do not find this a very pleasant game to look at. It starts with the UI clutter. Like it unironically looks like that Elden Ring UI meme. Massive ability icons glued to the center of the screen, a chat and quest information taking up. Mm, I think the UI is pretty simple, but. So much real estate, always some kind of dialogue or achievement all up in your face. I think the, the UI is pretty clean, resized. actually. Then there's the lighting, which can make could things it, look could it Could it have a better um, uh, uh, options to toggle off the UI here and there and rescale it? Sure, I would always welcome that, yeah. But just in itself, I don't think the UI is bad, but I guess that's just preferences. Pretty ugly. I'm playing at ultra 2K resolution, ray yeah. tracing enabled. And while I do applaud this game for its broadly steady performance at those settings, I can't help but feel the game looks very flat at all times. This eye adaptation that kicks in makes reflective surfaces have this strange shimmering effect and also often blows out the game to the point of being blinding. This also draws a lot of the texture out of materials, mm, I don't, making things I don't that really should agree with look that like either. metal instead look yeah. like plastic. Hello? Many of the Hello? indoor spaces, uh, specifically the man-made ones, look particularly bad because of this. Barring a couple of cool skybox elements, uh, the environments here are also just boring. It's just... Um, I, I, I do agree with this, though, where he's getting into. Inspired graph. Um, the world is dead. It just looks like an empty world. 
there are no monsters that are spawning here and there, but I guess it goes with their lore, maybe? Like, it's a post-apocalyptic thing. But their game, there's a lot of open space where not a lot of thing is there. No livelihood, and there's no wild chickens running in this field. There's, it just feels very dead. I don't know if it's, like, intentional. I don't keep up with the lore, so I, I, I don't really have anything to say there. But it does feel rather unalive. Lands, swamp, desert, yeah. and I don't know if it's in, like I said. I don't know how true it fitting ruins. it is. Lacking any I don't sense keep up with the lore. Originality or atmosphere. There's absolutely no creative use of colors, lighting, fog, or post processing to give these places any sort of wow factor. Pulling you through these locations is a story that is unsurprisingly not good. As someone who sat through every conversation, and I don't care how bad the story is because it has her. I want her, chat. I don't care. She's so beautiful. Cutscene, I can tell you it's not worth paying attention to, if there was any doubt at all. While there are some surprisingly competent voice performances here, it's mostly a cast of dry one-note characters navigating a tri conflict that you've seen um, many times. I've listened to the, the voice acting. Not the biggest fan. I think it's very mid. Eh. Voice acting. I play in Korean. Um, language. Um, and in Korean, it's better than in English, but I don't think there's anything stand out here as well. I do think I agree with him. Voice acting is times before. Meh. Bad guy needs three guns to take over the universe. Uh, good guys must get them first. I've heard it worse, for sure. Are easily tempted by the power, whoever. The entire campaign is just us showing up to where the next McGuffin is supposed to be, only for it to once again be pulled out of reach. I know that I hate this game. guy. How long do you plan on just standing there? Go back to Albion and bring reinforcements or something. Better get comfy and pop on a new podcast series to burn through, because surprise, surprise, that repetition in the narrative is just window dressing for a painfully repetitive gameplay structure. Every story mission is this. You load into an open world zone, you're asked to do a bunch of menial missions in whatever order, then do a little dungeon thing, and then load into the next zone. It is no joke, just this, on repeat, for almost 30 hours. It actually Yeah, the campaign is, um, uneventful. Up, take a breather. There has been no effort made here to provide any compelling narrative dressing. Thank God, I don't, no have, in where thank God I don't have to do the campaign again after just doing it one time. But uh, if I had to repeat the campaign over and over and over, yeah, that would be very annoying. I don't think the campaign really stood out to me. I think it is re rather lackluster. I agree. How these missions play out yeah. it is the same three or four missions repeated over and over again, all of them just some form of wave clear. It is basically Destiny Patrols the game. The only thing that could have made this even somewhat tolerable is the game had like incredible combat, but for me it's just serviceable. Each region does present new enemy types, but given enemies pose zero threat until late into the end game, this is essentially meaningless. Yeah. The few bosses and mini bosses you come across use the exact same mechanics, uh, breaking their involve phase by either shooting a few balls flying above yeah, them, a little, or killing the um, enemies. Yeah, a little more creativity in boss fights would be is nice. Decent, uh, in that every weapon has but good um we, uh, you know let's hear this guy out yeah let me read a comment from chat he sounds super biased he's a graphic andy if it isn't 4k re uh, reality looking it sucks not objective at all to be honest it's free to play not a triple a budget back and popping Kay. heads feel Kay. satisfying Movement feels responsive too, and platforming can be quite enjoyable at times with the help of this neat grapple hook that carries your momentum, but none of this is remotely enough to carry the extremely monotonous mission structure. Nor does that change once you've finished I the mean, campaign. I mean, to be fair, the, ca the campaign isn't uh, that exciting. Like, I don't think anybody, even like diehard The First Descendant fans would say, oh my god, the campaign is outstanding. It's very, at best, it's okay. It's tolerable. The end game, you do unlock a horde style thing, and there are some harder versions of the boss fights and open world missions. It did seem a little bit hard just too. Fighting the yeah. same enemies in the same locations, and even at the same pushover difficulty if you're farming parts to craft characters because they don't drop from the hard modes for some inexplicable reason. That leads me into progression. So it's based around farming components to craft new gear and characters like Warframe, uh -huh. combined with a looter-based model like Destiny, where guns and gear also drop from enemies. With that looter model tacked onto what is already a grindy game, inventory management becomes a nightmare. No exaggeration. Uh, Not really. Gear drops about as often as- Get rid of this. 
ammo does. So you are constantly having your inventory filled up, forced to dismantle things mid-mission to make room, never forming any connection to specific weapons because they're almost instantly outdated. You can infuse one weapons level into another, like in Destiny, but that requires loading back into the hub area, and you need to craft a specific item to do so. Yeah, I don't... Just no I, point don't I don't, I don't agree with this. Game. Um, the inventory stuff is like... Uh, I... I... I'm trying to really put myself in a position where maybe I'm a new player. Um, because I know, obviously, I have a, a uh, like a, probably close to a thousand hours in the game already. So my opinion is probably a little skewed now that I know the systems a little bit better. But I don't think I really had a big issue with inventory here. And I'm a huge inventory, massive a-hole about inventory issues and i don't think i really was too expressive about it in this game i don't think the game is really bad with inventory maybe if he's a, a super hoarder even out out playing me in the hoarding department which would be really hard because i hoard everything um i don't think that this game is the, one of the bigger offenders of this of the inventory issue it's such an unwieldy experience that renders Definitely the build craft not. basically impossible to engage with throughout the campaign, which is a shame because the build craft side of the game isn't bad. It's difficult to fault in the sense that it's basically identical to Warframe. You slot mods into weapons and characters. Yeah, maybe he doesn't know stats. that the loot. So yeah, like, yeah it does going feel through the good story to crank is up just the fire rate trash. on a shotgun and watch it rip through a boss. But at the end of the day, you're still just shooting guns with minimal differences in handling. I would love to tell you then that the diverse character kits inject gameplay variety where the missions and combat don't. But I was only able to unlock two of them in my time with the game, one of which being the starter character and the other being a guaranteed unlock. Their kits are decent enough. I mean, I mostly played as a guy who's basically a... Okay, I hope he's not going to talk about class diversity when he only unlocked two, though. Because, like, you can't give a take on Kleist's diversity, if you really only unlock two. Destiny Titan with a couple AoE slam abilities and two deployable shields. I also played this interesting one called Bunny. She gains an Which is free within the first 30 minutes of the game, by the way. So one of the classes that he got to play was Bunny, which is free within the 30 first 30 minutes of the game. And the other one, maybe Blair? charge from running around which increases the damage on her abilities to the point that I rarely ever needed to even fire my gun. Which in and of itself is class diversity. If you have a character that you don't even need to fire a gun, you just ro go around electrocuting everything while some other characters um, um, damage amplifies with guns better. That's already like a, a difference. That's like night and day between two characters, just two characters. So that's neat, but why couldn't I unlock the others? Well, this is where we get into some questionable stuff regarding drop rates. As I said, uh, you're farming these missions for components to craft weapons and characters, but each yeah. part only has like a 20% drop chance at most, with some as low as 6%. So that kind of sucks, right? Well, it gets worse. After farming hours for just one of those 20% drops to no yeah. avail, I thought something was up. I then did some research and found many reports of other players on both Reddit and Steam reviews also struggling to get some of these drops. Many of these cases being a near- Stop lying about drop rates, Nexon. It's one of those people. <laughs> Oh my god. Statistical impossibility given the amount of runs they had done. I'm reminded of the court case earlier this The probability of having only five successes out of 75 attempts with a, each attempt having a 25% success rate is approximately at times or about a 0.3 chance. The, given the amount of runs they had done. I'm reminded of the court case yeah, but a lot of this is also, like, just people speaking out of their ass, though. A lot of this is just people that, like, just fluff up their numbers. I, I, this brings me back to the person in my chat that said, Hey, Ellie, I hadn't gotten this piece to drop, and I ran this dungeon 200 times. Prove it. Prove to me that you ran a mission 200 times and you didn't get this.
unless you're grinding the wrong uh, the wrong place it is very unlikely for that to happen and it doesn't really happen people just make stuff up earlier this year when Nexon were fined nine million dollars for intentionally misrepresenting drop rates in one of their other games. I obviously can't 100% confirm that the- No you can't and bringing it up is dumb. Same thing is happening here but it definitely- It's not though. It feels off. Nexon have claimed that it's all working as intended and that they'll be making changes to drop rates in the future by implementing some form of bad luck protection. But this is Nexon we're talking about. If you trust them- This is Magnum Studios that we're talking about. Magnum Studios has definitely never not delivered on stuff that they have promised, though. I, I, I mean, yeah, I totally see it. If I, I, We have nobody else to blame here but the, the father company, Nexon, here for doing this in other games like MapleStory, which has a different development team than the one that is working on the first Descendant. Yeah, I'm not going to try to defend a Nexon for this. You definitely put yourself in a position where you're going to always be scrutinized by every project that you release because you did this on MapleStory. You are dumb. You know, that is true. But as a person that has, again, a lot of hours and definitely read every patch note and everything that comes up when these developers speak, everything has been delivered. They have bent over backwards and beyond for delivering for the people that have still played this game. Um, so if, if anybody's watching this and anybody cares, at least from somebody who actually put, plays the game, um, I can 100% confirm that the team has delivered on everything they have promised. Everything. Yeah their word uh, fair enough but i personally have a lot more skepticism for them given their history ultimately it was at this point that i was like yep no thank you i'm done with the uncertainty of all this and no bad luck protection currently in place i refuse to give this game any more of my time Obviously, the only motive to employ such arduous yeah. grinds and possibly shady practices is so that players inevitably get fed up and purchase the characters directly from the cash shop. So let's close this review by touching on the monetization. Monetization in The First Descendant is garbage. Uh, you can buy bundles of premium currency that, of mm -hmm. course, gives you just not enough for specific items, forcing you to shell out for the next bundle up or buy multiple. You can only get premium currency by spending cash, each character yeah they could probably do a little bit better by that you know like if most outfits are at 900 right let's see this bundle so you buy this bundle the 1000 bundle 1000 to 200 to 900 isn't that big of a difference um yeah could that could this be done better the currency purchases yeah i mean i'm i'm sure yeah, I'll, he gets a point there, but I'm still trying to figure out other games that do it, you know, that way. You can only get premium currency. And I think, I don't, I don't think I can think of one. Yeah. See, by spending cash, each character. Then Not that it's right, but I, I, I can't think of any other game that does that. It's about 10 Australian dollars at the cheapest, some up to $30. The ultimate versions of them cost over $80, and the most expensive package that comes with the, an extra skin and items to tweak mod slots or whatever goes for an eye-watering 140 You're not buying just the skin, for the record. You are buying multiple things in bundles. This is how bundles work. Right. So if you go right now and you criticize Path of Exile 2's $480 plan saying, oh, my God, Path of Exile 2 is so expensive. They're selling you the game for $480. No, that is a bundle. Bundles do this in video games. Not saying it's OK, but I mean, you have to be oblivious and living under a rock to not understand what a bundle does. Also, to give credit to the company here. They have already, um, since they are a great company that um, listens to player feedback, they have already addressed this. This is no longer going to be a, a business model moving on to the future. Starting season two, which is at a less than two weeks from now, they will be separating bundles. You can, be, you can purchase anything 
outside of a bundle now. You would be able to purchase this outside of a bundle, that outside of a bundle, this um, thing, you would be able to purchase separate things individually, like a headpiece. Um, if you don't want the whole um, outfit, there, you're going to be able to separate things outside of the bundle. They are also addressing some of the other things that are a little bit more expensive. Again, because the company listens to their players, they will be doing that in uh, monetization is changing starting again less than two weeks from now um but obviously this person probably doesn't know that because he doesn't do his research and he doesn't really care to um he's giving you what is currently in the game right now and if you really look at it like this um that you're only getting this skin for a hundred dollars I think it's a little bit disingenuous as well. It's like criticizing Path of Exile 2 for selling you the game for $480, which is not the case. You're getting a bunch of other stuff that comes included in this bundle. Those, that's how bundles work. Australian dollars give or take. Now, Warframe does charge something similar to this with their Prime frames, uh, but those bundles at the very least include a heap of premium currency to help justify the cost. But let's um, I mean, I guess in Path of Exile's case, too, they do give you some premium currency back if you do purchase a $480 pack. I really don't like that argument, though, um, because you wouldn't you wouldn't be purchasing that either way. Even if they do give you premium, cur premium currency back, it's money that you wouldn't have had to spend anyways. So I, I don't really like when people try to defend that. Oh, but if you purchase this, you get microtransaction currency back. It's just like, yeah, you wouldn't have purchased that anyways. So I, you I, I don't like that the argument. Look of your character. Armor paints cost less than a dollar each. The dying system, I 100% agree. If this guy wanted to rate the first descendant a 10 out of 10, um, and wanted to put a complaint, I would, I would do the the paint job alone would bring this down by five notches i do think that the die system is garbage but do note that they are one time use extremely uh garbage i think they should rework the way the dying system is um implemented in this game so just fully dyeing your character a single color will run you more than a few bucks the other kicker is that yeah you cannot die the default characters you can only uh correction um, or maybe a caveat, side note, that he is right. You can't die the default right now. Starting season two, you will be able to die it. Again, another community feedback that Nexon, Magnum Studios, has listened to. The die character skins, so you'll have to shell out for those first. Then there's also cosmetic trinkets, uh, XP boosts, and upgrade materials. And there's a premium battle pass as well, because of course there is. And as a free-to-play game, I can tolerate that. But the fact that everything is so egregiously expensive that there- A uh, correction, this is not egregiously expensive. What makes other business models, maybe like Warframe, if we want to compare something directly, um, what makes Warframe a little bit more tolerable with its microtransactions is that you can earn premium currency in the game by just playing it and trading stuff with players there is no trading in this game so you can't really earn some of the premium currency uh none of the premium currency in game um which is a, a good point for warframe and maybe um more of a negative one for this game but when you actually break down the microtransaction in its cost in this game they are extremely um and comparing it in the bigger picture with other games that have live service, um, live service games that have microtransactions like Black Desert, Lost Ark, Throne in Liberty, uh, this game falls right in track with all those games. So unless, again, you've been living under a rock um, and you don't know other live service games, this game's business model when it comes to purchasing packs, skins, clothing, zero. hairstyles, 125 uh, skin is equivalent of uh, $2.50. This is like $2.50 for an outfit. The skins are cheap, cheaper. So it, it, in some cases, it's even cheaper than a lot of live service games. 
visual customization for free players and that characters are so difficult to earn by virtue not true i don't think that the characters are difficult to earn you might not like its gr grinding loop which is making grinding a bit more unbearable for you but I don't think that the drop rates are uh, miserable and hard. But I guess maybe this is subjective. Maybe you don't want to put in um, more time into the game uh, than you probably would like. And that's fair. I guess that's just not for you. You just don't like the, gr the grind loop. Of their load. There has not been a single character in my uh, time playing this game where it's taken me up to longer than three days or four days. And one of the hardest characters, which the game has admittedly um, come out and said that they messed up on, is Haley. And even that character, I grinded out pretty pretty quickly. Drop rates, which may not even be accurate. It's clear that next on. It is accurate. I don't like working on theories and assumptions and stuff. The team has already looked into the drop rates and have uh, clarified and come out and said that they are working as intended. Have no shame, no respect for your time, and will go to great lengths to ensure you keep spending money. I'm not going to defend that. I mean, it's a company after all. I'm not going to say that this is a righteous company and oh my God, my company doesn't want to make money. There is a very high chance that a lot of the reason they have certain things in here is because they're trying to make profit. Hello, welcome to video gaming. Companies want to make money. the more positive reviews for this game uh, the most common sentiment is that if you like warframe you will like this with most of the praise directed at the gunplay progression and visuals broadly i can see where those people are coming from as i mentioned throughout this video some of that stuff is okay i can totally see players with deep into the end game having a good time with the power progression in the yeah. same way that you would any other looter what the crazy launch numbers really show is that people are hungry for an alternative to warframe because what's there has grown a little stale or didn't click with them in the first place but this is not damn a warframe players he just shit on your game it. Uh, for me, it was like rocking up to my favorite burger joints, trying something new on the menu, and then immediately regretting that choice after the first bite, with every bite thereafter serving as a reminder of how much more I would have enjoyed my usual meal. I think players quickly realized this too, as indicated by a 60% mixed review status on Steam and cratering monthly population. I know life's over. The, the 60, um, well, I'm not trying to say that none, none of the reviews are just, right? There, there are some people that, um, uh, that have uh, don't really prefer the game and they have some valid critiques and that's fine but a lot of this is nonsense it is over back to the reputation that nexon has built with maple story the amount of people that came out of the woodworks to bombard this game with a negative reviews are people who list maple story scam as a reason why they don't like this game like it's it, it really isn't hard to go back and look at some of these reviews and you're going to hear maple story being brought up and it's fake drop rates which is i think again i'm not going to defend that i think it's pretty just that nexon uh really screwed this up for themselves and they put this negative um image of themselves to the public that's definitely they're doing and they're suffering the consequences of that but as a player who has played this game religiously for a uh, heaps amount of hours you could probably consider my opinion very biased as well that's fine i'll take it i'm trying my best to not be as biased and um give you guys the facts and as best as i can and i um i don't agree with a lot of the takes that this person is saying um this sounds like somebody who um uh ha was handed a timeline here is this game go play it give us a review and you have um you have about five hours to turn this review in so this guy went in there oh my god it's work work mode let me see let me get to this campaign oh my god it's taking it's taking three hours to grind out blair oh my god <laughs> i need to turn this review in i need to turn and so he's looks like a person that is working and a person who has a deadline to turn in this paper it doesn't seem like a really uh, found based on actual um um hands-on time and somebody who is actually um doing their their review their their job uh, 
um, investigation, I guess. They're not really doing their investigation. Steam and cratering monthly population. Research. I know live service games yeah, evolve over the word. time, uh, but I have little confidence that Nexon will address this game's core issues. And I haven't even mentioned all the other things that bug me about this game. Like how the matchmaking often parties you up with high-level players who will one-shot every encounter, how ugly all the menus are, how spread apart all the different crafting and upgrade stations are in the player hub, and that the fiesta of ridiculous outfits I see every time I load in there make me feel like I've awkwardly shown up to a costume party where I'm... Uh, I'm not trying to invalidate his, uh, his point of view here, but it is... It, it, uh, it's just something to point out that I think is funny. Is um the matchmaking often he doesn't like that people queue up to kill a boss fast for him. Buddies, you I can see it if you want the challenge and stuff like that, but yeah. What's the alternative? The alternative is that you're stuck in matchmaking hell with a group of three bozos that can't clear something for like five hours. That's the alternative. I know that it's better to probably get a mix uh, if they find out a way to, to uh, have a good middle ground. But if you're asking me, what do I want as an alternative? Do I want some my high level player to come and help me out clear this? Or do I want to spend four hours clearing a dungeon? If you ask me at the beginning of the game, at the very early portions of the game, I'd want somebody to queue up and save me. High level players who will one shot every encounter. Uh, that's how just ugly me. All the but, are, how uh, spread you know, all the different crafting and upgrade stations are in the player hub, and at the fiesta of ridiculous outfits I see Especially every early on, I definitely would want that cleared out early on. Those are not in game bosses. Are in the player hub, and that the fiesta of ridiculous outfits I see every time I load in there makes me feel like I've awkwardly shown up to a costume party where I'm the only one in costume. All of this is to say that if you've already tried Warframe and are looking for an alternative, there are far better options out there. Destiny's going through a rough patch, sure, but the core gameplay is rock solid as ever. You've got ARPGs like Path of Exile and Diablo that also scratch that looter itch. A Wayfinder released into 1.0 recently, that offers a similar experience but without the microtransactions, as does Space Marine 2 and Remnant 2. The first ascended pales in comparison to the competition, but even setting aside those comparisons, even as a Destiny. free to play title, it is not worth an ounce of your time. I absolutely You can't do not uh, solo play all bosses. Yeah, there's some bosses that you can't solo play. Let me tell you play. about the most recent No! Don't tell me about the surf shark so if you guys liked uh the review and stuff and my reaction to it um don't forget to comment like and subscribe obviously people have the right to dislike whatever they want to like but as a person um who uh, i started this video or this reaction and saying does not recommend again i don't think there's any better judge for stuff that you will like than yourself and if it's a free to download game like the first descendant is don't worry about what some blue-eyed, white-haired VTuber has to say. And don't worry about some Austin. Do it yourself. Download the game. And if your question, if you're, if you're going to answer with me, uh, to me with, well, time, t there's time, Ellie. Nobody's got that. If you're watching this YouTube video and stuff, and you're watching some bimbo react to a guy making a review, you have the time. Bro, you have the time. Put the video playing in the background download the game and play uh, like that's just a dumb excuse just give it your, your 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 fair chance that's all i have to say and i say this about every free to play or free to download game you be the judge don't listen to me don't listen to him don't listen to um, anybody else but yourself and with that one hit comment like and subscribe down below and tell me what you guys think yeah do you guys agree with him um, or do you not agree with him? I know that a lot of you guys who watch my channel are the first Descendant enjoyer, so you're probably going to be biased just like me. Okay. Not so fast. Hit that subscription button before you head out. How about that?